Thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Stephen Kahn. I'm currently at the at Brock University, but I was out in Alberta up until August of this year or July. Um, and this is reporting on some work that I did out there, uh, working with elementary teachers to curate, adapt, and use OERs in uh, elementary math education. I do want to begin by thanking the many peoples who call these lands home for many generations, in particular here in St. Catharines, the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples and other nations whose teachings and continued presence remind us to consider the way the land lives in us and shares its life with us. I wanna express gratitude to the many nations that constitute our multi-species skin, who challenge us to honor our responsibilities to all our relations. Uh, being in Canada and not being from Canada initially, I've really come to value this practice and especially in this community as well. And that reminder that our survival depends on friendship, trust, and the collective wisdom of others. And um, I've certainly learned a lot over the last couple of days here at um, OE Global. Just a quick history. So this is building off some work. I, I had a grant from the Center for Teaching and Learning at University of Alberta back in 2018. Uh, worked with um, an undergrad student and a grad student to identify, review, and curate some open education resources for math teacher education. We experimented for a while, um, and then we tried, well, I had an opportunity to teach a more issues-based course, so not um, so narrowly defined, um, and more scope for students to explore So in the winter term of this year. Uh, the pandemic interrupted term, the lockdown term. So um, also a very interesting time to be doing that work. Uh, just an overview of what's in the presentation. So the who, uh, there were 33 B ed students in a undergraduate course, about 13 master's students. So I had two courses running simultaneously, uh, both new to me and to them. So very interesting winter term. Um, and I had one PhD student, one uh, master's student uh, working with working alongside me. Uh, our goals were really to introduce open education resources to these pre-service teachers and teachers to uh, get them remixing, to get them collaborating and developing some open pedagogical practices. Uh, we used the San Francisco United School District K-5 Math Curriculum Unit as our main um, open ed resource. We worked mostly with Google services, docs and slides, and um, a number of uh, resources available through the university library. So things that were of no, at no cost to students. Okay. Uh, the undergraduate course was face-to-face, -face, uh, weekly on campus. The graduate course was online uh, with, a, with a one hour synchronous. Sort of the main, I've, I mean, I've heard this at a number of sessions, sort of the same reasons for why we were doing, uh, working with open education resources. And for me, really about seeding um, future practice. So I do think that one of the things that, you know, we need to do in teacher education is be future ready and prepare uh, future teachers to use resources that are available to not reinvent the wheel. Uh, some of my data from this comes from the students' reflections, the remix assignment, uh, interviews with some of the graduate students and mostly looking for themes and how they described it. Uh, some of the findings, so again, as we've heard lots over the course of the conference uh, for teachers, many of them were being exposed for the very first time. They had this, um, this fear of plagiarism of not being original. Um, learning to work in teams was uh, challenging for some of them. One of the sort of emergent themes was uh, the need and the difficulty of finding culturally responsive and respectful open education resources. But I think that's as we, as I and they begin to look more and I've certainly seen some examples um, over the last couple of days here. Uh, other outcomes were um, increased confidence to use open education resources. In some cases, increased math knowledge, but not all. Um, a lot of them were getting good insight into unit design and pedagogy as well. 
uh, so sort of a little bit of the framework for my work with teachers as well. So I situate a lot of my work um, across scale. So thinking across the personal, professional, practical, and pedagogical or political scales, and all of these always nested in the particular place that individuals find themselves. And so in the course, students had opportunities to you know, uh, do work in their personal journal, curating this, their self and curating resources. Uh, contributing to the community, whether it's in the classroom or in the online community. Uh, the main sort of practical activity for teachers was remixing the curriculum. The plan initially was to also try to create a, I think that was a bit too ambitious for the 12 weeks and the pandemic sort of put a shutdown to that um, intention. Um, and then sort of a more substantive work, which also got reduced as a result of the um, change in focus at that time. Um, sort of just again, framing context for my own goals for teachers uh, as being well prepared and capable of promoting flourishing with others. Um, a lot of my work is around developing identities and thinking of identities as something that is curated as well. Um, so we do some work around where the word curation comes from um, and sort of the etymology coming back to a person tasked with the care or care of souls. But we reframe that um, in our work as thinking about care as deliberate and loving attention to the necessary aspects for the realization of well being in another. And we think about cure as learning how to be well in the world with others, even in the presence of despair, anxiety, fear, illness, and death. And again, these things had very different meanings when we introduced them in January, then at the end of the course in uh, late March, early April. And yeah, let's see that one. So again, it's framing what learning mathematics means to me and the position that we present to the pre-service teachers and to the teachers that um, it involves a collection, connection, and curation of resources, experiences, ideas that develop competencies, fluencies, literacies, and it's for a particular purpose, a human and multi-species flourishing. Uh, the framework for the course uh, built off of Martin Seligman's work with the PERMA model around um, opportunities for positive emotion, relationships, accomplishment, engagement, and meaning, um, work that's taking place in mathematics education, for example, Francis Sue's work on mathematics for human flourishing, and work that's taking place in uh, education more generally around uh, teacher well-being and flourishing schools. Um, and some of the rationale, so things that I've noticed and wondered about over many years, you know, how long does it take for the beginner to learn to know how to do something well? Uh, our beginning teachers are substan experience substantial time stress in their planning, um, they invest significantly in cute resources from um, sharing sites like Teachers Pay Teachers. But at the same time, we have all of these, um, we have a number of resources that are good and that could be used. Um, I also see that as an equity issue for beginning teachers, not just in terms of the finances, but in terms of um, the types of things that they're able to um, engage with and bring to learners. Uh, and I do see open education resources. One of the frames that I put into the course was that um, as one path towards thinking about teachers flourishing early in their careers rather than um, floundering. Uh, the, the main assignment was a remixing of an open ed resource, right? They worked with the San Francisco United School District, but they um, were exposed to others like Illustrative Math, Open Up, Eureka, and a couple others. Uh, SFU was chosen because it was the most permissive and easiest to use. They, again, I've heard that a couple of times at the conference. Uh, SFU SD lives in Google as well, and all of the teachers there were very familiar with Google. They could immediately edit. Uh, there weren't, you know, PDF things where you had to convert. So it was easy to get going there. Um, this was sort of the description of what I asked them to do. So how to do it. So they creating routines, um, mostly annotating their changes as they went along as well. Um, and then I just wanted to share some of the student responses in the next couple of minutes. Okay, um, I don't know why the previous slide didn't show. Um, so 
thinking about that feeling of guilt that they are you know, not um, wanting to, having been told to not reinvent the wheel, but at the same time being asked to create original ideas in a very short and compressed time frame while dealing with the regular stresses of life. Um, I appreciate that there were um, places where they could find resources that they could use in future classrooms. So immediate utility, um, same, same sort of thing. Um, but noticing that that's not what they saw in practice as well, that in practice actually teachers were continuously borrowing and adapting and not attending to copyright. So uh, learning to value the open licenses, the signaling that um, Creative Commons licensing um, presented. Okay. Um, learning to look across curricula as well, which is something uh, we try to get pre-service teachers to do, to look across grade levels and not just um, narrow their focus. Um, yes, yeah, so adding stress. Okay, what do real teachers do? Again, the level of expertise required to um, develop really coherent units is not something that all of them are you know, at that point yet, but yet they will graduate and move into teaching. Um, this was one that was interesting for me in terms of the student seeing an opportunity to learn from someone else's thinking. So an openness to, this might be the way I might approach this topic, but there might be value in looking at how someone else and somewhere else has done that. So I thought that was really interesting as well. Um, the challenge, the fact that for most of these students in the undergrad, this was their fourth year at university and working in teams was not something that was normalized for them. Um, and so, you know, they, again, they valued it, but they found it very difficult um, to work in teams. And so fourth year is not really not the best time to start working in teams. Um, my teamwork, yes. Uh, becoming more familiar with their own program of study. So having looked at the um, US space and being forced to engage with their programs in a much um, more, much looking at more closely and thinking about the alignments. Um, in addition to doing some of the sort of necessary changes like changing currency and changing measurements where relevant, uh, changing landmarks and locations. Uh, one of the main things that I did see as well was this, be this beginning development of an attitude of valuing openness. Um, while again, the course ended and they weren't able to share um, their resources, many of them did say, this is something they plan to do in the future in terms of um, creating a resource that can be shared. Um, okay, future planning. Okay, uh, necessary versus arbitrary change, certain group sizes. Uh, one of the other challenges that came out sort of as again in the context in um, Alberta at the time um, with the requirement to address TQS5 on um, honoring foundational knowledge of First Nation, Métis and Inuit. So looking for things in the resources that would do that for them and not finding a lot. So definitely an area that's still, that there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and again, one of the things I'm happy about is, you know, some of these teachers I think are well positioned to begin to do that work and to be drawn into the open ed community to do that work. Um, experiencing increased confidence, initiative, and feeling more connected to you know, the community. So I think something to adapt other similar tools, starting to explore resources outside the assignment in order to grow some of their adjectives that they use very frequently, uh, unique, challenging, meaningful, enjoyable, and useful. And I just wanted to share as well, I think I have about three or four minutes, um, one of the graduate students work where sort of um, moving beyond just remixing the content, but remixing the actual design. So this is the unit design from the San Francisco United School District math lesson. And so entry lesson, apprentice, so very linear model. Um, and this was some of the work that he did. Again, um, in this case, it's a high school teacher who is remixing a kindergarten unit at the end of, well, not at the end, uh, during the pandemic. So what's available at home, but some good ideas in there as well. 
But what I wanted to flag was sort of this shift in the way he's rethinking um, what teachers do in terms of that, not just a linear flow through the material, but um, the ability to choose your own pathway and to find different pathways through the material. Uh, we didn't quite get to, you know, designing all of this out, but the idea is there, and I, I, I think he's working on it um, while he's also teaching full time and being a parent, and, and sort of thinking about how that begins to move into the bigger um, sets of units that are related in um, kindergarten here. So it's something that's exciting. It's something I had not um, seen or thought about. Right, not just remixing content, but remixing even the um, meta structure of the unit itself. Uh, grad responses. So again, the worries that um, some teachers who these are full time teachers um, that the loss of autonomy. Um, we did spend a little time talking about that's not the way it's typically used, but sort of that. Uh, valid trust issues in the educational climate in some places in Canada. Uh, concerns about equity, again, that um, there are resources that uh, because of the cost are restrictive for some areas, for some, um, for some schools. And finally, um, coming back to sort of the focus of the course that, and again, I've heard this at the conference here, um, it was uh, working through this class, allowed me to see just how much I flourished when engaged with colleagues and thought provoking content. It was the professional development that I didn't know I needed. And so that's given me some um, motivation to continue to do this work. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this wonderful work. I always love seeing and learning about projects and initiatives that are focused on teachers and how we can support teachers and their work. As we know, they're like a core element for everything, this structure to work. So thank you, thank you very much for sharing this wonderful, amazing work that you're doing. And uh, we might be able to squeeze one question in the one minute that we have left. If anybody yes. wants to make a question or a comment, please go ahead. Otherwise, I'm gonna share the link to the area in OEG Connect, where- I shared the link there as well to the slideshow. Great. Excellent. Excellent. And if you can upload that in the OEG Connect, we can have it there permanently. 